This video is way overdue. I've been slammed with travel and other content, and the fact that to do a video on a soundbar, you kind of have to sit still and be at a house doesn't really help. Regardless, I finally got some time with the Sony HT-Z9F soundbar, and I'm a little mad that I didn't have more time to play with it, but we'll get to more of that in a sec. Right now though, let's start this complete walkthrough of the Sony HT-Z9F with what the hardware consists of. The Sony HT-Z9F is Sony's latest 3.1 surround sound soundbar that they claim can deliver 7.1.2 Dolby Atmos and DTS-X sound for less money. What they mean by that is that even though it only has three speakers in the front of it, not including the optional satellite speakers, it uses some clever software to project sound vertically behind you and above you. Something 5.1, 7.1.2 systems do with speakers on the top of the bar aimed at the ceiling that bounce sound down back at you. Side speakers project sound around you, etc. But we'll get to how well that works in a demo for you guys shortly. For now, that's just the gist of the offering. The sound bar is 39.5 inches wide, only 2.5 inches tall, and about 4 inches deep. Placed on my entertainment center and in front of my 65-inch Samsung Q7F TV, shows you some perspective and hopefully gives you an idea of what it might look like under your TV. Inside is three 46mm drivers that you can access by removing the magnetic grill if you want. In addition to the sound bar, it also comes with a wireless subwoofer that I placed to the left of my entertainment center because that's how the quick setup guide had theirs and who am I to argue with it? That unit has a 160 millimeter woofer inside to handle all of the low end stuff. On the back of the soundbar, we have all of our ports. We have two 4K Dolby Vision compatible HDMI 2.0A ports and one ARC capable HDMI output port, as well as an ethernet port and an optical input. We have a USB port that allows you to play audio from a USB drive or external hard drive if you want, and a 3.5 millimeter audio input as well. The system supports Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and has Chromecast support, as well as is Alexa capable. So you can stream music to it from your phone via Bluetooth, tell it to play music using Alexa, and cast music to it via Chromecast, and have a display on the TV, for example. Something else I noticed that is clever is that Sony put an IR repeater at the rear of the soundbar, so you can have the soundbar send IR signals to control the TV, even if it's placed in front of the TV and blocking the TV's own IR sensor, like mine is. Now this setup costs $900, and it's supposed to give you comparable audio to like a 7.1.2 system just like that. But there are also two optional rear speakers that cost an extra $300. Now soundbars don't generally have a good reputation when it comes to setting them up. They can be overly complicated, absolutely. This one though is the opposite of that. I plugged in the main bar into the power outlet, plugged in my HDMI cable from the ARC enabled HDMI output and into the ARC enabled HDMI input on my TV. Then I plugged in the subwoofer and the two other speakers, turned them all on, pushed all of their link buttons, and pushed the green power button on the remote to turn on the soundbar itself. After that, I went through a quick setup process and was given a green notification line on all four units telling me that they were all connected maybe in a minute or so. Done. Okay, but what do they sound like? Well, my dad is here visiting and we are both kind of excited about the latest Star Wars trailer. So we figured we'd test these out and rewatch The Last Jedi. While we're watching this, I can tell you that even without the rear speakers, it does a pretty good job actually of convincing me that there are speakers around when it's really all just coming from that sound bar. Now, I would say that it doesn't quite have the sound like coming directly above me, like a system with real top firing speakers would, but there's definitely an element of like vertical sound, which is kind of impressive. Now besides Dolby Atmos and DTS-X content, it also has Sony's DSEEHX upscaling tech that takes normal audio and upscales it to close to quote, near high resolution sound quality. Now, since you guys loved my Sony MX-1000 Mark III video where I put my microphone in the cup to demonstrate the noise canceling, I wanted to try to give you guys a way that you could hear what this sounds like and I think I might have found a way to do that. So these are the Hook Audio Verse, and they are a binaural 3D audio headphone that are also capable of recording sound like that as well. So the idea here is I'm gonna put them on, move my head around, and they will record the audio as my ears hear it in kind of a 3D way. Then using the software, they channel it down to stereo so that you guys should be able to hear it through your stereo capable phone or computer speakers. And if you have some headphones, put those on and you'll hear the effect even more. Tell 
Now, I'm not an audiophile by any means, but I know when something impresses me. This soundbar definitely gives you an upgrade to your normal TV audio experience. And then also with all that connectivity, you can play music on it from Spotify, from your phone, control with Alexa, etc. When compared to a proper 7.1.2 system like Sony's own HTST 5000, it's hard for me to see how that could be that much better when it costs almost twice the price at $1,500. And if you want the extra immersion, the extra $300 for those two rear speakers do help that quite a bit. All in all, and considering all the other glowing reviews and all the ratings on this system that are already out there, I think this might be the closest you can get to cinema quality sound in your living room for the price. If you guys wanna learn more about the Sony soundbar, I've left a couple of links below to the cheapest places that I could find it. And then also I left a link to the Hook Audio Versa. There you guys. Hope you enjoyed that. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Always love to hear from you guys. Uh, and if you're not already, please subscribe to the channel and ding the bell next to subscribe so you can notify when I do new videos. Also head to the link below to sign up for my weekly newsletter. It'll give you all the videos that I do here on YouTube as well as a bunch of tips and tricks and stuff that I do on my site that don't necessarily make it here to video. Now, as always though, regardless, thanks for watching.